we have to start establishing that this is our place. From here on out. Hey, this is what we play for. We're better safe than them. Let's go. Come on, go get it guys. Go! Welcome to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside the head coach of the Lopes, Dan Marley. And Dan, we travel back to Seattle as we begin the show. A, a victory. Seattle came in here a year ago and uh, came away with a victory. They uh, were threatening late. You guys went on a 13-5 and five run, and, and you win it by uh, three. Well, we had to. We played uh, really poor in the first half. Uh, you know, that 3-2 zone, they're really good at it. Um, we had a hard time scoring in the first half, especially when we didn't make any shots. Uh, so we got behind. We fought. Um, came out in the second half. Uh, I thought we did a better job of moving the basketball, getting the ball to the middle, uh, spreading it around. Some guys hit some key shots, uh, and we were able to get a victory. But uh, it was a tough fought one for sure. Kenzo Nudo, Nudo made his uh, debut, the uh, Scottsdale native. What did you think of his performance? Three of eight from the yard. He was all right. I don't, I don't expect anything out of Kenzo this year. I mean, this kid is just four months out of an Achilles it's surgery. Amazing. So, yeah, it's just amazing he's back and hasn't played basketball in a year and a half. Uh, hasn't even practiced that much. So. We just stuck him out there uh, to see what he can do. Tr more of trying to get the speed of the game, uh, get him up to speed for next year so he has some experience. But uh, anything he does uh, for us will be you know, just a cherry on top because I don't expect anything from that kid. He's not in shape, uh, doesn't have his legs yet, doesn't have an explosiveness, but he can hit shots. Uh, we'll just see how it goes. So for his first game here at home, uh, for him hitting three shots like that was good. That's amazing. I would think you're going from zero to 60 pretty quickly because, you, as you mentioned, you're not in basketball shape. Yeah. You can't do anything. You can't climb stairs here at the arena to get into basketball. No, and he, you know, he's it's going to struggle a little bit, especially defensively. The speed of the game is so much different, uh, and he's a freshman. Uh, so they, he's got everything going against him. I told him not to worry about it. Just go out there and uh, if he plays well, hit some shots, he'll stay out there for a little bit or he won't. And it's got nothing to do. I have no expectations for Kenzo. So whatever he can give us is, uh, is gravy this year. You traveled uh, then onto the road, UMKC and then Chicago State. It began at UMKC and I know you weren't happy after this game. No, well, I was happy after the first half, 42 to 30 right. at the end of the first half. We played well. Uh, you know, the first couple of minutes of the game, we weren't very good, but neither were they. And then we went on a little bit of roll, hit some threes, went in halftime up 12. And then the second half, we give up 53 points. They go to the line 28 times. Uh, just a abysmal performance in the second half. And we can't allow that, especially uh, in WAC games on the road when you have a chance to get a much needed road win, to let a team come back and score 53 points and uh, to beat you in that fashion. It's just unacceptable. So uh, very disappointed uh, that we let that one go. Is it hard to, to get these guys up? I mean, they've battled through some injuries. You got new people in the lineup. I would hope just not. Just a consistency factor, nah, game you know, in and game out. We talk every year uh, at the beginning about WAC play mm -hmm. and how important it is not only to win at home, but go out and get road, road wins. So uh, if they're not up for those games, then they don't deserve to be wearing the GC uniform. Uh, they won't be here next year because that's, that's what we're about is winning the conference. Uh, you know, winning the WAC, uh, getting a postseason bid. Uh, obviously, we can't do that this year, but doesn't mean we shouldn't try to win every game. Well, any any road game's tough, as you just mentioned, and you go to Chicago State, perennially a team that, that is near the bottom of the conference, yeah. admittedly, and they gave you a fight. You had to go to 2 OT. Yeah, it was another, uh, it just was a pickup from UMKC. The the yeah, the first half was just, was abysmal again. We couldn't make any shots. Uh, they played zone. Uh, missing wide open layups, missing wide open jump shots, didn't guard very well. Um, and this is Chicago State team, even though they've only won six games, uh, they got some talented kids that can really shoot it. Two in particular that can really get it going. So uh, just wasn't happy with the effort. Uh, went in at halftime, kind of uh, voiced my displeasure of not only you know, how we're playing, but how hard we're playing and how important it is to our guys. So they stepped up in the second half and we had some performances. I mean, uh, you know, Dwayne played 50 minutes, Keontae had a great game, Josh, Oscar. So guys stepped up in the second half in a, in a role that we didn't have a lot of guys play uh, minutes in the second half with those starters. Uh, so they gutted one out. 25 points for Dwayne. He's got the hand injuries plagued with 90 minutes. I mean, he played full 40 at UMKC. He's piled up some big time minutes. Uh, and it doesn't bother him. That's no, what he likes right. to do. And, yeah. You know, I, I expect him to play uh, hard and play for 40 minutes. Uh, he's in great shape. He loves to play basketball. He doesn't want to come out of the game. So uh, that's nothing, man. I expect him to play every minute of every, uh, every every play. And I'm upset when he wants to come out, and he never wants to come out. So that's the kind of player I was. I have problems with guys who look at me and say, can I get a rest? I'm like, you're crazy. No, stay out there. <laughs> you're young. <laughs> yeah. You can rest when you're dead. <laughs> exactly. How about Keontae Vernon, though? Another double-double. 
in the game and had a career high. Keontae is infuriating. He really is. What? I mean, really? Yeah, because this is a guy who could probably do it every night. He's that talented. He's that physical. He's that uh, much of an athlete. Um, but he doesn't play hard all the time. And he's starting to learn that a little bit. He can dominate games at times. He's done it last year in big wins for San Diego State at San Diego State. Uh, he did it. So when he plays hard and gives the effort, uh, the whole time he's on the floor, he's really, really good. So that's just something he's got to work on. But he did a great job, especially in that second half of dominating. You've been dominating at home. On the road, it's a whole different story. Two victories, six losses on the road. How, how is it to Well, it's a young team. Yeah, that, we got we got young guys. We got a great atmosphere here, yeah. uh, which really helps. But we got young young guys who are playing a lot of minutes. Um, and they don't they don't know how you know you have to play to, to win on the road. It's really, really hard. And you have to uh, take care of the little things. You can't make little mistakes, can't turn the ball over. And some of our young guys don't understand that yet. All right, stay with us more. The Dan Marley Show continues after we take this timeout. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside Keontae Vernon. And uh, boy, coming off of some recent performances, Keontae had a career-high 25 points at Chicago State in an extended effort, albeit two overtimes, but a couple of double-doubles back-to-back uh, recently, and I believe six overall for the season as of this taping. How do you feel yes, you're performing? Um, I am feel like I'm doing all right. I'm lacking every – get, I'm getting in trouble for – taking a lot of possessions off so uh, the last few games he, he got on me and that's why I kind of picked up my, my performance and um, it's just you know what I mean not taking a toll on me but you know what I mean it's, it's, it's kind of late in the season so I'm kind of tired already but got to perform you know what I mean so that's right when the lights are on you got to perform. perform yeah yeah coach Marley was talking earlier in the show about you know the consistency and well, he sees probably some things and and you that you know, on a consistent basis obviously yes, you could be really dominating yes sir and uh, that's that that's exactly what he's been talking to me about uh, especially in the locker room he got on he got on uh, everybody uh, <laughs> at halftime of the Chicago State game and just was saying that nobody's being consistent and he he got on me and that's when we, everybody had to pick it up, and I think that's it's going to translate to the rest of the season. And that's, I think that was huge for us. What has this been this season been for you? I mean, last year you were new to the team. You came in, you're with Grandy Glaze. You guys were the kind of the rebounding guys. You were the Smash Brothers. Yeah. Now you kind of had to kind of lead the way as far as the rebounding and the, and the physicality down in the low post. Um, I just think that it, it it came with me being it's my second year. I kind of think because I was at Wyoming, I, I didn't play. I was there for a year. Then I transferred again to a junior college, there for a year, and then got here. And now it's, this is actually home. I feel welcome. I feel I feel great about things, and it makes it a lot easier for me to, to go out there and play, knowing that I got my guys having my back. And and that when when you got that family oriented oriented team, it makes everything so much easier. You want to go you want to go win for for your teammates, and everything that I do is for my team. How much of a conscious effort was it this year to limit the fouls and stay on the court longer? That was one of the, that's funny because uh, TJ, we actually like wrote down some some goals for the year and that was just to, to bring down a lot of my fouls and a lot of the dumb fouls, I should say, because um, I, I would reach knowing I'm not gonna, get the, not gonna get the call. I would do some, some dumb things where I'm not gonna get the call. So then I would just, I would be in, you know what I mean? I would get, right, I'd be right. in foul trouble for myself in a, in a dumb situation. So I had to eliminate the dumb ones to stay on the court. But but I see that I see that a lot, you know, and it seems so instinctive. Yes, sir. You know, you, you miss it, somebody grabs it, you, it's like a split second decision, exactly. and you got to stay so disciplined exactly. not to reach in. It's like I'm 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 real I'm real big on defense. So if if I need to get a steal or a block or something to, to turn the game around for the team, I'm, I put my, myself on the line for that, and, and that's where that's where I start to you know what I mean pick up the pick up the fouls. And I got to be a lot. I've been a lot smarter, and I got to continue to be smarter with with those decisions. Well, we saw Dwayne uh, Russell, Josh, they put in the extra work, obviously, to diet with Dwayne, uh, allowing him to get additional minutes. But I also see you after practice, free throw line. The, your mid-range jumper has yeah. improved. Are these a couple of other goals that you set for yourself this year to improve? Oh, yeah. Um, I spent a lot of time over the summer with Dwayne, working out with Dwayne, working on free throws, working on ball handling, just a lot of a lot of things just to, to evolve my game and become a better uh, player. Um, I got a long way to go, but I'm not, I'm not going to stop now. What about the rest of the WAC coming up? You've got, uh, as this show airs on Saturday, you just played uh, Bakersfield. You've got UTRGV, you've got New Mexico State. Bakersfield's not going to be any uh, cakewalk here, but you have them on your home court. Yes, sir. Um, it's always good to, to have good competition, regardless if it's home or away. And um, We want to win the WAC still. We hope, Hopefully we, we put ourselves in a, in a terrible situation by losing two WAC games already. So uh, we got to win out from here. There's no, there's no excuse now, home or away. 
What do you see from some of the, the young kids that have joined the team, the Oscar Frayers, your buddy uh, Shaq Carr has stepped in and I got his him. debut at Duke and had 18 oh, yeah. in that yeah. game. Well, he was pretty well poised in the game. But what about Kenzo Nudos and, and some of the players that fans are going to see for a few years now? Oh, I see, I see a lot, especially Fifi, Oscar, uh, Kenzo, and Shaq. I see, I see a lot. They, um, they come in every single day. They come in and, and fight regardless of the circumstances. They get put on the on the white team is usually a starting team. They get put on the, um, the black team. So and, and they don't ever get called. So <laughs> when you have that, they, they always they, they always find a way, even though some most of the time they lose because we not the white team not going to lose. You know what I mean? So um, but they, they always fight. They always come in and put the extra work in. Um, I love Kenzo to death. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad Kenzo came back he, <laughs> and I can't wait to see what he brings him and him and Oscar, especially because they're both freshmen. You know, what I mean? it's yeah. going to be a wonderful uh, thing to see. I don't know if you heard this or not, but I get kind of excited when you do slam dunks. Yeah. Even like in the first minute of, of a game, yeah, have you heard I, that? I, I, I took a little lot. bit of heat for that from yeah. Louisville fans. I see it. I see yeah. it on Twitter. It's all right. I, I got your back. I, I'll like make that? sure. Yeah, I got you. Okay, yeah. just I keep really doing like it. All right. Yeah, I got you. Definitely. I appreciate definitely. it. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Keontae Vernon, our guest. Stay with us. We'll have more of the Dan Marley Show after we continue with this timeout. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside Andy Stankwitz here outside at Brazel Stadium under. Beautiful blue skies. It's, yes. it's baseball season. It the weather is. warmed up yeah. this week, and uh, we're ready to get things started, aren't we? Yeah, got above 50. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, bit of a wimp, but yeah, it's gorgeous. This is uh, this has got the the smell of spring, right? Yeah. Uh, baseball is coming, so it's it's exciting time for us. Andy, let's talk a little bit about last season, how it finished up for you guys in a very very competitive conference. Well, it uh, um, you know it uh, didn't quite unfold the way you know it, it, we would have hoped it was, and we had. You always have high expectations, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody does um, going into the season. So um, we got a little banged up on the mound. You know, there was there was a stretch there that the guys that were starting in, on the weekends and, and later on in the season weren't guys that were starting. You know, the beginning of the year. And so, but that's you know that's baseball, mm -hmm. right? That's why mm -hmm. you develop on the back end. You get guys ready to to, to pick up the slack. And um, but uh, we were a little banged up, and um, and so we just kind of kicked and clawed our way through it. And we didn't have the year that we wanted to, but I think. Uh, I think these guys that are here now, I think they're hungry. I think they they didn't they didn't enjoy you know finishing in, in the middle of of the conference, and, um, and so we're, we're we're excited about about getting it going. When you talk about your starting rotation, you talk about the two Jakes, you talk about Deegan. These three guys probably going to be right in the mix for your starting rotation. Yeah, we think so. What we've seen early on, we've got uh, Jake Rubovich, who's mm -hmm. who's got the most innings for us. He's just uh, experienced uh, lefty, and um, he's actually gained some velocity on his fastball. You know, he used to kind of. Call him the crafty lefty, but mm -hmm. uh, no, his, his fastball in inner squads has been been at the 88 and 89 range um, consistently, and he can pitch. He's just a competitive young man. He had a great summer season as well. Um, and you've got uh, um, Jake Wong, is, who pitched a, a bit as a freshman for mm -hmm. us. He's kind of a bigger, stronger right-handed pitcher for us, and we kind of liked the way he's done about his business in the fall. Um, so we think he'll be one of the guys, possibly even a Friday night guy for us right now. And then Deegan Hart. Um, who was a transfer from Yavapai. Deegan's the guy that we we liked out of high school. You okay. know, we recruited him out of high school, but we just, we just didn't think he was ready. Um, but he went to Yavapai, they did a nice job of helping him develop, and he stepped right in. And um, he's, in, he's like Jake, where they're um, long, where he's big and a physical right-handed pitcher. So we, there's two guys we think that are going to be running the ball up there at 90, 91, 92 miles an hour. Then you got then you got Repovich, who's a lefty with, with some, some off-speed stuff to counterbalance that. So. That's what it looks like right now. <laughs> Come uh, middle of next month or this month, we'll see. But yeah. uh, that's the way we're looking at it right now. You know, if you follow the program, the, the middle of the infield's been just rock solid, whether it was Chad De La Guerra at, at second and it was Paul Panachone at short. Those guys are, are no longer in GCU uniforms. How does the, um, the infield look in particular right up the middle for you well, guys? Well, we, uh, um, we like uh, Austin Bull, who played a lot as a freshman last mm -hmm. year, switch hitting guy who hit the top of the lineup. I think he was a uh, second team all whack performer. Um, so he'll be, he's back and right now we have him over at shortstop and um, it's, a, it's a position he's familiar with. He played there in high school and so he's fine and um, he's been getting a lot of reps at short. Um, and then we've got uh, Tyler Wyatt or, or Greg Sines playing a lot of second base. Mm -hmm. um, those Both those guys have done a nice job and still not kind of sure what's going to gonna unfold there. Then we've got Mark Mumper who's, who's, who's got as much skill as any of them, mm -hmm. you know, because he's got a great arm, he's got some speed, um, he's got good bat speed as well, and so um, we're going to kind of obviously keep him in the mix in the middle as well, um, um, but we like 
like the way it, it, it tightens up. We we don't have a, a guy that's been like a true shortstop his whole life, like Paul right. has been. Um, so f for sure we're gonna miss that. But uh, but like I said, the, uh, what I've seen at a, at a Mumper and Austin Bull at short, uh, we're gonna we're gonna be fine. I know the WAC preseason accolades are gonna be coming out here in the coming week. But D1 baseball came out. Garrison Swartz getting some big time recognition in the outfield, and in particular your entire outfield looks pretty solid. Yeah, it does. Garrison's back, you know, for year three, and what he's done here for the last two years um, has been been great. Mm -hmm. He's just kind of been a mainstay. You know, in right field, I think every year he's led the assist, uh, the outfield in assists. Um, he's uh, good, great jumps on balls, and he's really accurate with his arm. And then he's he's always given us really competitive ABs, and so um, he's back. And um, you know, we we were glad he's back. And you got Tom and Tom Larue is is here as well. And you know, he had labrum surgery, and it looks like he's his arms starting to starting to loosen up a little bit. And we think he'll be ready to come opening night. And then uh, Preston Pavlica, who was a freshman. Last year, got some got mm -hmm. some good abs under his belt, and so we feel like those three um, should be able to man that that outfield as, as we start the season. Well, we got about a minute left. Let's talk about uh, the competition. You've got Oklahoma State coming into town for that opening uh, home series, three game set uh, TV broadcast on the on the 18th of that series. But you're, you're not shying away. You got a home and home with Arizona, and we'll yeah. also have that game on April 11th on television. So uh, yeah. You're going yeah. to take on some of the best in the business. Well, it's, it's, I think it's the way to do it. Yeah. You know, it's part of what we want. We want our guys to, to play the best and experience a great college environment. You know, we go to Arkansas as well mm -hmm. in the middle of the week on a Tuesday and Wednesday. And so, um, you know, we've always told them that when we recruit them. If you come to Grand Canyon and play here, um, you've got great competition in the WAC. But just as, as important, outside of conference, you're going to play the, the best in the country. And, and they enjoy it. They they revel in that. And at uh, it's always uh, it's always a great 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 time. It's always great to see you. It's always great to be on the on the diamond with you. Good luck this coming Thanks. season. Thanks, Barry. Appreciate right. it. Thanks. Andy Stankowitz, our guest. Stay with us. More of the Dan Marley Show coming up after this timeout. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. When Tatum Prudhomme was 16 years old, she chose to play tennis for the only coach she's ever known, her father. This season will be the last for the coach and the student athlete here at GCU, and it will be one to remember. Most of the opposing coaches, if it's certainly the first time we played against them, are not aware that it is my daughter. In fact, they would probably bet against it because there sometimes is a lot of tension and strife when parents are coaching children, especially in individual sports. But uh, I've made it a point, I went out of my way early on to do my best to not play favoritism but also to not go to the other end of the spectrum to make things too tough on, on Tatum. And I think sometimes I might have erred a little bit on that side because um, I didn't want to take away any of the experience from the other student athletes. He's like my best bud. <laughs> on the court, it's kind of funny. I feel like when he comes to coach me when we're playing opposing teams, it's like two against one because sometimes my opponents figure out that he is my dad before the match because he'll like give me a hug, kiss before I play, say have fun, good luck. And then it's, I don't know, it's kind of fun like getting to go into battle with him even though it's an individual sport and I am on the court by myself. So I do look to him for assurance a lot when I am playing. So I like having him around. We have a really good relationship and it's not so much coach and dad. Like I, it's more important to me that he is my dad so I think that's what helps us have the coach relationship as well. When I told her she didn't have to play for me and that um, she obviously could get great offers at most of the schools in the country, um, she got a little offended and said, don't you want me to play for you? And so of course that wasn't the case, I just didn't want her to feel she had to play for dad. Um, so it didn't take much convincing at all. He's known me my entire life, so he knows what I'm like and that I like to be close to home. So he was trying to help me reach out and possibly go somewhere else. But I was like, no, I want to stay here. I want to play for my dad. <laughs> it was kind of funny. I made a video without my dad knowing, like a recruiting video. I just sounded like such a beginner tennis player, as bad as it sounds. And then I sent it to him and I was telling him all of these funny things and he opened the video and it was me. So that was kind of funny. I thought I was a jokester. <laughs> 
Since I did online school, I would just hang out with him all day basically, and that meant coming to campus when he had to work, so I've seen it since I was about 12 years old, so I've seen the dirt parking lots and the old buildings. I'm kind of like possessive, I know it sounds really bad, but I've known about it for so long that I'm like, no, this is my school, even though it's not my school, I know that. But I think it's great that the name is getting out there. She had probably the, the best perspective of all when I asked her if she wanted to redshirt her freshman year to save her senior year. Basically, I was pointing out to her that we won't have a chance to play in the NCAA tournament. Everything else will be the same. And then she said, well, what's one tournament? That's not going to change my experience. And she's right. In the big picture, GCU has provided wonderful experience for all of the student athletes that have been competing here during this transitional time to Division I. So there's one tournament short at the end, but I think it's more than made up for in a lot of other areas and benefits that the kids get here. Come on, go, go, go. I'm not so much about a big name. I came to Grand Canyon in the beginning. They weren't that well known and I embraced it. I still loved going here. So it was more important for me to get the experience and playing alongside the five other seniors that I've grown with throughout the last three and a half years of college, as opposed to like, wow, cool, I played in a big tournament, but that's just a title, whereas the experience for me was more important. I was taught young by good mentors that I've had along the way to cherish the time and to not take things for granted. So. You know, I'd like to think that I was very aware all the way through um, the process of my daughter playing for me that it was a special thing and is a special thing just as it's special to coach college tennis and, and try to make a positive impact on any of the student athletes that I coach. Tatum had her work cut out for her being the coach's kid and uh, you know had the, the spotlight on her a lot more to make sure that she was behaving and, and doing things right and being a great student in the classroom. So she definitely had a lot of weight on her shoulders and, and held her end of the bargain up with flying colors. This spring, Tatum will graduate with a degree in health sciences a day before her 20th birthday. No doubt her father will be watching very proudly. This fall, another Prudhomme will be joining the team, the head coach's daughter, Autumn. We'll be back with more of the Dan Marley Show after this timeout. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Time to wrap things up as this uh, show airs on Saturday evening against the uh, game against CSU Bakersfield. Here's a team that comes in uh, as of this taping at 5-1 and one in the conference. And then you also got UTRGV on this homestand and then coming up New Mexico State. Doesn't get much easier on this homestand, but you obviously play real well here at GCO Arena. Well, we do, and it's, it has everything to do with our terrific crowd. Um, our guys get pumped up to play here. Uh, it's going to be a really tough weekend. Uh, Bakersfield's really good. Um, came off a terrific year last year, uh, playing well this year. Uh, they feel as though they're the best team in the league. We want to be the best team in the league. New Mexico State is the best team in the league. So that's a, that's a fight for us three. And uh, uh, for us to be uh, uh, successful, we have to win uh, home games, especially against the top tier teams here in the WAC. So it'll be an exciting week uh, weekend here Saturday for uh, uh, Bakersfield. And then I can't wait for uh, UTRGV and then New Mexico State. That'll be a blast. All right, Coach, thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning into the Dan Marley Show.